I wonder if you can try your hand at this. I'll give you a nudge, and then I'll see if I can get on your own. Okay. They give you another vector equation, but it's rather more exotic. You're like, whoa, cosines and sines, what are they doing in there? Don't worry, don't freak out, the question will explain. You've got a vector equation, and then they've given you particular values for vector A, vector B, vector C. Okay. The question itself, part A, says, show that this is a circle. Hmm. I wonder which part of you might think, oh, I can see why that might be a circle, right? We can show that it's a circle by finding the Cartesian equation. Now, just have a look at how we kind of did something similar here, right? To try and get towards an equation, you're going to combine different things together. And then, do you remember, I had to get out of vector form. See how this is in vectors, right? This is a vector equation. And then suddenly, by this point, I'm now talking about parameters. You see that? Okay. Now, what you're going to do is something very similar using these vector distances, right? Vector distances take you from vector notation to non-vector notation. You see that's where we made the transition? So you're going to need this point here. That's why I highlighted it so you've got it there in red. Then part B, where on the circle is theta equals zero, on the unit circle, which I unhelpfully rubbed off, on the unit circle, we know where theta equals zero is. Where is it? Where do we measure from zero? We start from like 12 o'clock, that's how we measure on a clock. Don't nod at me guys, theta equals zero on the unit circle, where is it? It's, a, it's the positive real axis, that's where we measure things from, right? That was a test, to see if you were awake, you failed, that's okay. Um, theta equals zero is on the positive real axis, and then we go anti-clockwise, right? On this circle, where is theta equals zero on this? And then, as you add on to theta, do you go anti-clockwise or do you go the other way? You'll only get to know by trying out some different values of theta. So that's where this question goes. I'm going to give you a five or ten minute head start to see how far you can get. My big clue for you is, this is the crucial step that's a bit tricky and weird, right? How do I get from vector stuff to get out of vector stuff? That's what they mean when they say, find its Cartesian equation. You're going to need to make use of this, okay? Have a go and I'll come together with a solution afterwards. If you have trouble, let us know. All right, so uh, let's try and bring this together. Um, it's been really encouraging, by the way, seeing many of you totally on the money. A few arithmetic errors have snuck in, and I'm going to show you a way to try and avoid some of them, right? Let's have a look at this first line that I've written, okay? What is this first line? This first line is the vector equation of this mystery thing, which apparently turns out to be a circle. All I've done is I've replaced the V, the A, the B, and the C. Right? A, B, and C are given, so one, two, three. And then V is just shorthand for, there's an X component, there's a Y component, because I'm in two dimensions here, okay? Now the reason why it's helpful for me to do that is because once you've got everything in column form, column form can interact with column form, yeah? So I've got three vectors over here on the right-hand side, which I know is gonna be messy if I try and do this vector distance business, right? Not impossible, just messy. Whereas now if I say, for example, subtract 0, 2 from both sides, you can see what am I getting over here? I've got an x and a y minus 2. Pretty easy to do Pythagoras on that. And by the same token over here, in fact, that doesn't need any change at all. I'm just going to leave it as is. So at this point, I'm going to use this vector distance idea here. It's just Pythagoras in here to do this, right? I've got a distance, it's two hypotenuses as it were, except I'm comparing them on both sides. So what do we get? Should be x squared plus y minus 2 all squared. Yes? Which is just delightful, isn't it? This already is in kind of the form that I want, right? Equals to... Now, yeah, you, you have a look, right? You're like, oh, as I expand this out, you've got a cos squared and a sine squared. This will also give you a cos squared and a sine squared. And then when you do the minus 2ab, what do you get on the first, on the x component? Minus two, two sine theta cos theta. Yeah. For this one you get plus, plus two sine, sine theta cos theta. So of course you would actually write this out by the interest of you actually getting out of here without yeah. watching me write seven lines, okay? You're gonna get two, and then it's, well there is a cos squared plus a sine squared, right? I've factored yeah. out. We've got one from each line, so okay? So in fact, this being one, right? Uh, just to make it very, very obvious, right? What is this 2? It's root 2 all squared. See, I've got a Cartesian equation now. Does this make sense? So that's an R squared. Do not fall into that little trap. Because we've been, because we've been looking at equations like, say for instance, this, which has a radius of 3, 
right? And then you go over to the Cartesian world and you're like, wait, 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 that's an R squared, not an R, right? So it's a bit like the first time you learnt uh, integration and you're like, a differentiation, integration, my brain's getting all mixed up and confused because you've got both of them together. It's kind of a similar thing here. We see students do it all the time. Radius two, no. Radius root two, okay? So, we have succeeded. This is a circle. We've found its Cartesian equation. Part B. Read the wording with me, because there's some weird words we don't tend to use very frequently. Where on the circle is theta equals zero, and in which direction is the circle traversed as theta increases? What does traverse mean? You can, in this context, I could use the word rotate, um, because it's a circle. Um, but, in fact, traverse is a lot more general than that. I could, for example, say, go back to, I don't have one on the board, I could go back to some straight line, right? I think the one we were looking at before was something like this. I might have my ones and twos upside down. I can say that as lambda increases, lambda is the parameter here, I traverse this line. Does that make sense? I move from one end to the other. So, traversal can mean rotation, as it does here, but it doesn't have to, okay? Where does it land you when you put in uh, it's not lambda, it's theta, right? When you put in theta equals zero, where do you end up? You get, you get a vector, right, of uh, one, one. Yes? Now, it will help you here to have even a rough sketch, and I hope you've already got one. Actually, show of hands, who's got the diagram on their page? Oh, come on, you 12. We've taught them nothing, Mrs. Lees. Okay, get your ruler out, draw me a set of axes, okay? You can do this with me, it's not even hard, right? It's a circle with center what? It's a circle with center what? Zero, two, so zero, one, two, bam. There's a center, right? The radius we've already established is root two. Root two is roughly 1.4, right? So if this is one, then 1.4 is about there. Should have been further up, sorry. And about there. There's my distance vertically. I'm going to do the same thing horizontally. And there we go. Look, my no pair of compasses. You can do one at least as good as that. There's my circle. Where is 1, 1? 1, 1 just... Where's 1, 1? Halfway down. Halfway down. I put even a scale for myself, right? It looks like it must be about there. That's not too bad. Freehanded it, right? So there's 1, 1 which is theta equals zero. And now I need to work out, well, as theta gets bigger, which way do I go, right? Now it's in our interest just to choose a convenient value. What might be a nice convenient value? How about 90 degrees or pi on two? When you go ahead and pop it back into here, let's just see what happens, right? You got zero two. What happens to cos theta when theta equals pi on two? It's zero, that's why it appears in the dot product, right? Because when they're orthogonal, you get no dot product, or you get dot product of zero. So you've got, here we go, you've got this term disappearing. What happens to sine theta when theta is pi on two? One. It's one. So you're just getting this zero two plus this negative one, negative one. What's that give you? Negative one, one. Negative one, one. Where is that on my circle? Symmetrical to the uh, by the y-axis. Very good. Symmetrical across the y-axis. Thank you. So here's theta equals pi on two. Sorry, that's horrendously messy. Okay. So you can see which way I'm rotating. Which way am I rotating? Clockwise. Clockwise, like so. There's the center, and there's that pi on two. Okay. And if you wanted, it'd be overkill, but you could put more angles in and you'd get it. Okay. Does this make sense? 